Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. We want to give everyone a little time to get uh, joined in, get situated, get settled, grab your coffee, get a drink of water, whatever you need to have in front of you to get join us through this next presentation as we discuss transforming e-commerce in B2B and B2C with the AI revolution. We're going to be back in just a minute here and get started. So everyone uh, hang tight and we'll come back. started here. I'm going to bring up all of our lovely faces so you can see who's on this call today. Uh, so I am joined, my name is Jonathan Meyer. I'm going to be running as the moderator position here today. I'm from the, the Bridgeline Hawk Search side of the equation. Uh, I'll pass it over to John uh, Mercott, who's also from the Hawk Search side, and we'll bring in Mr. Rob Newman here at the end to do some introductions here. So John, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Jonathan. Hey, Rob. Uh, John Mercott here. I run products uh, and strategy for Hawk Search. Looking forward to the conversation, and thanks everyone for joining. Rob. Rob. Yeah, my name is Rob Newman. I'm one of the partners of uh, CSS Commerce. Uh, we specialize in e-commerce and on-page search with Fox Search. Excellent, excellent. Going to have some good conversations here today. Let's go ahead and give you a little rundown of what we're going to cover in this webinar. Always good to understand what you're going to be getting out of this kind of these kind of presentations. So let's go ahead and run that down for you. Really, between it's going to be more of a conversation between John and Rob here, discussing a lot of the aspects of kind of what AI is doing in that e-commerce space. But really, we want to make sure that you're walking away with an understanding of the basics of AI and and how that is impacting e-commerce. We want you to be able to identify the right tools and technologies. One of the things that we've been talking about in preparation for this that has been very exciting are those tools and kind of the, the things, the features and functionality that can bring to your e-commerce application and the different experiences that we're now able to help drive for those uh, those visitors to your site. Which leads right into the next point that we want to make sure that you're able to walk away from this presentation with, which is how you can leverage those AI features to enhance your customer experience and drive those sales. Um, not only are these really cool features and functionalities that, that are coming down the, the pipeline here and that we're, we're implementing and that we have success stories with, uh, there, there are real world applications and we want to make sure that we're also cut covering how those have already been successful uh, discussing those AI implementations in e-commerce. So lots of great things for us to cover, lots of great topics for us to tackle here. I've been uh, in preparation for these, hearing John and Rob talk back and forth. Uh, it's going to be a good conversation today. So let's get into it then. We're going to start with the very first question here. And that is, where does AI fit in with the customer journey? And, and John, I think maybe I'll part pass to you to start with here, and then we can just kind of kick things off that way. Sure. Uh, so, and Rob is an expert in this too, it really always comes down to conversion. And there's so many steps along the way to hopefully get someone to purchase a product online, which is kind of the bottom line here. And when you think of those initial conversions, you have the email campaigns, you have the banners that people are hopefully clicking on. But in the world that we're going to talk about today, in the world that Hawk Search lives in, we're talking about when the customer really engages with you and starts to search for things. And that's when you really understand what is the customer, hopefully you understand what the customer is searching for. And the issue is there can be scenarios where perhaps in the older ways that people were doing search, the relevancy of the results might not have been perfect. And the problem is if the relevance of the results aren't great, there's a less likelihood that people are gonna click on those results. So that conversion is what's driving that, um, uh, the goal of the of the marketing team. So the bottom line is, if you can apply, in addition to what people traditionally understood to be that keyword search. So if someone puts something as a keyword in the search bar, we're going to return from the index, so to speak, you know, results that are appropriate. But if I could leverage AI, if I could leverage a deeper understanding of the intent of the question, what we refer to as concept search, or 
if there are scenarios where perhaps the person doesn't actually know the appropriate keywords to find what they want, they have a picture. Like, I want what that person has. I want that thing. Um, or maybe even a language issue. Like, I don't really know how to explain it exactly in English, but I can explain it in Spanish or another language. So the point is, if AI can help find those relevant results to get the person to click and convert, to go to the product page, add something to the shopping cart, and of course, ultimately to purchase it, that's what we're talking about here. And AI is a great tool to help get you to that point. Yeah. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, let me let me jump on <clears throat> on that point. And that is, you know, we think so much of SEO, right? If you get 1% more uh, visitors to your site, how much is that worth? Mm -hmm. Well, I want you to think about what if you got 1% more of your total revenue? Driving conversion through on-page search is a better investment it drives your total revenue. And now with AI, we're improving that capability. It's not just a 1% or a 2% or a 3% improvement of on-page results. It becomes a very significant revenue driver. Yeah. And maybe that's the final thing. I know, Jonathan, you have some other yeah. questions, but Rob, to that point, it's that one chance where the customer is explicitly telling you what they want. That's Other right. options are a little bit, a bit more of you're casting a wide net. So anyway, it's part of marketing. You're going to do it. But like it can't be more explicit. I'm looking for something on your site. I made it to your site. And now I'm telling you exactly what I want. Without a doubt. Yeah, that's a lot of really good information there. And I think that lays the groundwork for kind of where we see that uh, that becoming a part of the conversation of, of where does this fit in? And as you're talking about John and Rob, it really is about kind of touching each part of that process. And, and as you're saying, Rob, also kind of improving the, the overall numbers that we're talking about of that on-page experience. That is, like you said, that just kind of impacts the bottom line across the board. But let's move into the next question then here. And I want to make sure that we're, we're covering every topic that we have here. And this, I think, gets into the more of the specifics. So we've kind of laid out the, the groundwork and John, you kind of gave that high level there. And Rob, you talked about what does that actually mean for the bottom line. But let's get a little bit more specific and let's start walking through those business use cases. Uh, for you utilizing AI in my e-commerce. And, and Rob, I think obviously you were already kind of going down that path there. So why don't we start with you on this one? Sure. Thanks. Um, so uh, there are so many opportunities, but let me give you one about uh, uh, something as simple as plumbing products. So uh, there are, and I didn't know this, but plumbing uh, product distributors have as many as a million different SKUs for the things that they sell, right? And it becomes a very interesting um, differentiation. How do you find something inside of that many SKUs? And it, it's actually pretty complex. But if you were to search for something like a Kohler faucet, Sure, we can find a Kohler faucet. We can um, put that up and deliver exactly what you want. Um, but there are so many different options, right? Mm -hmm. How do you read that intent? How do you look at what was going on? And so there are great things with a, with an AI that can, it can look at, right? What were you searching for previous to this? It can put together, what are you actually trying to assemble? And it can give you, um, specifics. And let me give you some examples, um, if you are looking for three quarter threaded, um, you know, brass uh, and uh, and you're looking for, um, you know, uh, various hex options, right? Understanding those things and putting it together will get someone a better match. Now, the other thing is one of the one of the things I think is really important that drives a tremendous benefit is that you can also show other options, right? Showing just one doesn't necessarily satisfy um, uh, what the demand is for, uh, for, for the customer. You can present other Kohler options. You can present things that are based on margin. And that's mm -hmm. one of the innovations that, uh, that we took a look at that says, you know what? Sometimes the house brand costs a little less, but you make more on it. And those kinds of search things that you can do 
um, utilizing uh, an AI are tremendously valuable. Yeah, I'll just uh, append a little bit to that, uh, Rob, <clears throat> and that is even something that was new to me when I came to Hawk Search, is that, of course, we're talking about search and the search experience we were talking about before and the conversions, but it's also that recommendation, and that is actually a component, an actual uh, concept, and there's multiple ways to go. Rob, you nailed two of them, which is, well, I have a pretty good understanding of my data model. So based on the category or some other attribute, I'm going to recommend these products. Or of course, there's going to be a business case. So this was from this partner and we have a good relationship there or there's a profit margin. But that third option you were alluding to it is the AI, which is just looking at what other people are doing. So you really want to blend all three of these things. You have your business driver, you have your data model, which of course came over time and your understanding of the products, but then also let that, sometimes people use the term wisdom of crowds, like let the overall activity on the site drive what some of those recommendations are. And then over time, and this is where the business part, Jonathan, comes in, because the business people are always going to say, well, I want to compare this versus that because I was using this strategy before. Now I want to see what kind of conversion or other metrics happen. Now let me try this and let me compare like, oh, when I switched, you know, from this strategy to this strategy, maybe a little bit more on the machine learning versus the profit margin or what have you, you see what the results are. You compare which ones do the best. And this is what business executives love to do. Look at the numbers, <laughs> see what's successful, and then you make that business decision. But the AI gives you that third option. That option wasn't available before. Mm -hmm. Now you have a third option for what is appropriate to help increase my average order value by making these recommendations at the appropriate time and hopefully making the right recommendations. Absolutely. Excellent. Great topic as always here. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question here. Uh, again, we're just going to keep on digging deeper into this. So the next question that we have here, um, really, I think this is more kind of a statement and kind of how we can talk about how on both of our organizations here, we've kind of seen how this can be uh, not applicable. So really the myth that AI is only accessible to massive companies with large IT teams. I mean, this is something that you know, you think about where you hear about AI is, you know, through like Amazon's and through Google's and Microsoft's and kind of those large, huge companies that have, you know, an army of an IT team kind of crunching data and pulling in different resources. And and uh, in our experience here, and, and Rob, this is one of the more exciting things that I think that we've, we've heard from both of our sides of this equation here is that this is not the case anymore. There's really been kind of a democratization of AI and bringing it to uh, really everyone here. So why don't we have a little bit of a conversation around that and then kind of break down this myth of you know, this is no longer true. Uh, and, and Rob, why don't we start with you again? I think that, you know, you, you, you have a lot of good information around this topic here. Sure. Actually, I was just at a, uh, a current customer and we were demonstrating some new capabilities and, you know, they're, they're just under a hundred million dollar uh, manufacturer and distributor and they were just shocked, right? Oh my gosh. I thought this was only for big companies. Um, I want to stress, right. Um, you know, AI is extremely accessible, right? It We're using it in very defined ways um, and we're using it in ways that make a lot of sense, right? This isn't some massive uh, experiment anymore, which there's a lot going on and it's quite expensive. This is using the capabilities of building up data over time, which Hawk Search has done for you, Right. So that's what makes it accessible in terms of price. But it's it's defined. And those definitions make all the difference of using those those large models to be able to move into a company and immediately apply it. Right. So my my first efforts prior to Hawk Search, right, we had to teach everything. We had to do a lot of effort. Uh, Hawk Search reduces what I have to do for a customer. It's extremely accessible, and it, you'd be surprised. It's quite affordable now. I'll, I'll add some things, uh, Rob, there too. So the first one is when you do look kind of across the enterprise, there's many use cases, obviously. You could say, oh, we use it in marketing, and you know that helps us create content and things like that, which can reduce costs, and that, that has a business value. 
or maybe you do have a, a very ambitious like financial modeling and we want to forecast you know this or that which to your point rob might not be as accessible and that might be a little <laughs> bit more tricky right. but i'm biased and i know rob is too to an extent in this answer which is well you have an index with very valuable information your product details that are available on your site for purchase and there are tools that can convert that index data, the descriptions, the categories, the titles, other relevant information, um, and convert it into a vector, not to get into all the technical details here. And now I can have natural language processing search or intent or concept search. Now I can search by images. So I think it's the best example where you can actually have a technology, a use of AI that can really drive business. It drives that conversion rate. It drives the average order value. It's information that I already have in my index. And right. yes, you would need some expertise from folks uh, like Rob and the CSS team because they've been through this before. And I need some technology like Hawk Search, but it's kind of sitting there. Like, why don't we set up a sandbox? Why don't we kind of play around with this, test it? And what we like, we push live and start seeing those results. So I think. It's the best of all worlds. A lot of the technology and these big companies, which even I sometimes, and Rob, you probably do too, scratch my head to say, wow, they're really making a lot of technology available for a reasonable you know, amount of money. Yeah. Um, and it's something very practical, right? It doesn't have to be, you know, let's boil the ocean. It's like, let's improve our search results and the engagement on our, uh, on our website. Yeah, let me quickly add to that. I know we have a lot of topics, but... My company started around data management, right? How yeah. do we create um, a master data set? And as we looked at that and we began to see the enrichment and the things that we were doing, you know, search became a natural outcome of, wow, we could use this. Well, as I said, that was that was a very big uh, effort originally. Once we found Hawk Search, we can deliver that um, uh, in, in a few ways. First, I mentioned it's actually faster and it costs less. Everyone loves that. <laughs> but it's actually better than what we did. And and you brought this up, uh, John. But we can what what you can have now is Hawk Search searches in multiple ways, right? There's a technical expert who's going to search in a particular way, but there's also a business person who's going to search in a different way. And you don't have to build those models, right? I mean, literally, we built models by hand. You don't need to do that. You're able to take advantage of sets of knowledge that already exist and have brought uh, tremendous value to you. It, it allows a lot more options for your visitors. Yeah, that's that's great information. I think that's one of the things that, uh, is, you know, speaking from the moderator point of view, I think it's been very interesting how you know when you think about the conversations that we have around AI, I think part of breaking down this myth is that it has so many different use cases and so many different applications and can touch on so many different things. And Rob, you're kind of hitting the nail on the head there, where it's a very uh, kind of surgical application of that AI technology and those 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 models is saying. We're not approaching this as like image generation or, or you know, if this is how can we solve for the search requests that we're seeing on your site? How can we solve for the use cases of someone searching? And that breaks that functionality down into a really specific thing that we can zero in on and leverage those existing tools, John, like you were talking about of saying, okay, these are the things that are out there. We can apply those directly towards that search functionality. And that brings the functionality down into, you know, the companies that aren't Google, aren't, aren't Apple, aren't, you know, that are more your average companies that can leverage and benefit from this. Well, let me quickly add one yeah, more no, thing please. to build on that. And that is AI is actually more useful this mm -hmm. way. Okay. Everyone hears about these large language models and everything that they're doing, which is fabulous and it's coming. But deep down, we all know it's not here. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I mean, honestly, right? Yeah. Where AI shines is in a particular application, like it, here, what mm -hmm. we're presenting, right? We've taken the large language models. We've taken all of these things and put it together, but we focused it on yes. a particular problem. And AI does a much better job of doing that for a variety of technical reasons. But the results you're going to get here is better than ChatGPT. 
Let, let me make that clear. Yeah. Okay. We're not talking about just mere chat GPT finishing your homework, right? I have a college <laughs> student. Right? It, it, we're going to actually do a significantly better job. And, and the reason is, is because the models are specific and honestly, they're technical, right? And this is where AI perfectly shines. So I, I want to make that distinction. We're not we're not talking about some general thing that's going to mm -hmm. have an eighty percent solution. This is perfectly set up for what we're doing for you. Yeah, you're not you're not going to go to your e-commerce store and start asking it to write your homework for you. You're going to go to the e-commerce exactly. e store exactly. and ask well, it to find the product that you're looking for. Correct. Find me <laughs> products that you know, and then you write a bunch of words. Yeah, um, you're starting with something specific and getting to more specific specificity. Wow. Okay. And such a great example for ROI. So you're, you can sell it online. You, you know, it's like, it's just sitting there. Give me more options and more tools That's right. for improving that conversion and getting more people to buy things. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's another avenue that's available. It's not something that is exclusionary. When you start leveraging this AI, it does not necessarily mean that the old ways go away either. So there's, you know, it's about having, it's not that now we have a hammer and everything suddenly looks like a nail. It's that we're adding that hammer to our toolbox. That's right. That's right. Well, let's go, because like you said, we do have a lot of topics to cover. So let's go into the next one here, because I think we really broke that one down here. Let's move on to the next topic, which is going to be how can this, so we've been talking about all these other ideas about kind of what does this bring, what are the tools that this brings to the table here? And one of the things that we can discuss about this is how can this handle uh, with search abandonment or zero results pages? So this is, you know, one of kind of the key aspects that we would think about from a search experience using AI to get to, you know, the kind of the classic pain point of having an on-site search is if people put in the wrong things, are they going to get zero results? If they put in the wrong thing and they get back in poor results, and then they leave the site. And so there's a number of things that we can definitely do to help improve with this. Uh, and John, I think I'm going to lean on you here first. We've, we've been kind of throwing to Rob a lot. I want to make sure, John, you're getting some time to <laughs> talk here. And yeah, this is right in our wheelhouse as well. So John, let's go ahead and get your thoughts on this. Yeah. And there's always that classic question, like what keeps you up at night, you know, from a business <laughs> perspective. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm speaking for Rob too, when I say, zero search result pages like that is the absolute worst all of these things we're talking about activities you know I, it would be horrible if no one's listening to this webinar i hope that's not true but you know that's a, that would be kind of a miss if you will same with i sent out all these emails and didn't get a response but if someone is on your site they're telling you what they want and you're not returning anything that that's a huge problem so when you go back to say like, okay, I love the toolbox kind of example you were saying before, Jonathan, if you say, well, I have one tool to respond to what's put in that uh, search bar. Okay, well, hopefully that's going to be a good tool, like the keyword search and that type of thing. But if you can say, but I can also add intent search and or I also can offer an option for image search now, I don't know if I would say it's 200% better, but the point is the likelihood of those results are going to be dramatically reduced. That's number one. But even number two, if you say, you know what, it, they put something silly in or who knows what, it, or just whatever, they're, they're just not coming back with anything. The question always is, okay, what are they going to put there instead? Like you don't want to lose the opportunity to not make that recommendation. I mentioned this briefly before. You want to recommend something, and the best way to recommend something is to say, well, I don't know what the person's searching for. So what should I recommend here? And we even have a technical way of saying that it's a it's a search request with no passed in parameter, like you're not passing anything in. So guess what? You go to machine learning. Like we were saying before, what are other people searching for? What's trending? You know, obviously businesses are different, but if it's a, a a business that follows follow seasonality like what's trending what's going on so these are all of the strategies hopefully it doesn't happen but even if it still happens wow i really hope we put something in there that's relevant so those are kind of the two aspects there rob i'm sure this keeps you up at night too you have a customer saying i get a lot of searches with no search results <laughs> yeah that is the absolute worst and we talk yeah. about search abandonment there's nothing mm -hmm. like this to make someone believe, essentially, you don't have what they're looking for. And if they don't think that you have it, they're going to go to someone else to find it. Yeah, and It's really simple. Um, and I'm going to go one worse that just occurred to me. 
you know, when we do search audits to, you know, show someone that we could make an improvement, um, you can, you can, we get 404 pages sometimes. Oh, geez. And you, and, and I'll show you, and I'll tell you why, right? One quarter inch. Well, how do you do that? Is it one, one slash four IN, one slash four, you know, parentheses? You can go on and on. Well, yeah. symbols like the quotation mark will often break a search. Now, it's not going to break Hawk hot search, but in many of the clients we've worked with, it actually returns a 404 page. That's even worse. Yeah. But I can tell you, I mean, our philosophy is we never return a null search page. We, we've got to give you something. Even if it's a list of categories and some pictures that says, were you searching for this, right? But with Hawk Search, right, using your own language, the, the capability of just a, a general description will wind up with some options that are a whole lot closer than me just giving you a set of categories. Did you mean? And then search further. And that, again, right, uh, makes the, the client believe, <clears throat> okay, I just need to refine my search. These look like things I was interested in. And the closer we can get, the more likely they believe you have what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. That's really good information there. And I think that kind of gets to the point of, you know, like like we talked about having that other tool. This is one one tool that you can leverage to help improve those those abandonment rates, get those zero results down. And like you said, what are you bringing back even in that first place, uh, Rob? Is, is yep. if it's if it's better than what it was before, you're you're helping decrease those about those 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 rates and making sure that you're getting toward that kind of improving that customer journey. Uh, to fall back, kind of the, the big topic that we're talking about here, how is this being leveraged in that customer journey? Uh, this is one of those key ways that we can help leverage that. Yep. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question here. So where does Gen AI? So another thing that we want to make sure that we're being clear about here, we've been talking about AI and kind of these more uh, broad kind of topics here, and we've been zeroing in on how, this is, how that is being applied to search, but there is a key distinction that we want to make sure that we're referencing here in terms of the generative AI, which mm -hmm. is more like those kind of chat GPT experiences uh, how can we leverage those? And specifically in like a B2B e-commerce ecosystem, because that, again, uh, you were mentioning, Rob, at the top of the call, you know, that Kohler faucet. There's so much that can go wrong with that kind of a search. Are they doing a part number search? Are they misspelling Kohler? What are they looking for when they're doing those kind of things? How can we leverage Gen AI in that kind of, uh, of a e-commerce e-commerce a B2B e-commerce ecosystem? Say that three times fast. <laughs> and how can we you know leverage that then? Well, and I, I actually just gave an example, I realized, <laughs> did, <yeah>. right? <laughs> which is the mathematical terms alone, mm -hmm. right? There are so many ways that, you know, there's industry standard ways of expressing it, but there are synonyms. There's lots of other ways of putting things together, right? Um, you may want to, you know, uh, you may want to think about um, image description is probably one of the leading edge things that are going on. Being able to describe, well, it looks like this. That is an amazing step forward for a B2B company, right? Because what it allows is uh, it's you to really think about things. I can, I can remember, right, when I was a, a junior engineer just out of college. Yes, it really was a long time ago. <laughs> but that said, right, I had to learn. A number of things right college does not prepare you for something specific if you're new to the job or you're a young engineer or a young buyer and you haven't learned these things this actually helps you right it helps you begin to quickly um, get to what you're looking for without necessarily the same amount of specificity and uh and, and the other thing is right you take a look at uh how it helps you in terms of um, being able to write your own product descriptions. I mean, that's a reverse use of it, right? But if you begin to accumulate this data around what are people searching for, and you know what the most searched products are, you actually can improve your own product descriptions <laughs> and go back and add to it. Which is exactly right. Uh, whether it's the specific uh, products, and I'm sure you face this many times, Rob, where you have a company, they get data feeds from multiple sources, product catalogs, they're not consistent. We get this all the time and we have 
uh, holes or gaps in our data. So if you can go to the AI and say, well, why don't you, meaning the AI, look through the description or other relevant information and help fill in those gaps. And maybe one other thing to highlight is it, you have the product descriptions. Those are for the individual pages themselves for each product. But there's also what's sometimes called like a category page or you know sure. a landing page with multiple products. It is helpful from an SEO perspective to maybe have a paragraph that kind of describes those types of products, why they're useful, et cetera. And especially in B2B, there's a lot of scale. We have a lot of categories. <laughs> we have a lot of landing pages. We do. You know, we don't want to hire someone to have to try to go through and write one or two paragraphs for each one of those. But if you could use Gen AI to say, look at the products in this category page and maybe even look at some other what are called prompts. So other information related to our site or SEO or what have you and generate for each one of the pages that description, store that back inside the CMS or the PIM or whatever uh, the e-commerce tool is. It's a great use of, uh, of Gen AI. Because I know Jonathan and Rob, you too, people kind of throw out AI and you understand like, well, there's one part of AI, which is what generates those vector databases for all the search we were saying before. There's another type of AI, whether it's machine learning or that type of AI. Then there's the final part of AI, which is, it's generating content similar to the college sure. student writing the paper about <laughs> World War II or whatever it is. It could write two nice paragraphs about your category of products. Which I, I know we're coming to the end of the time, but I want to fit <clears throat> this in really quickly, right? Teaching a marketing person how to write technically about your product, it's very hard to find that person. Yeah. Getting your developer or engineer to write because they actually know it is nigh on impossible. This is not why they went into that job. Therefore, <laughs> Gen, I, Gen AI can write these paragraphs for you, right? Yeah. That include the right terminology and include the things that someone in marketing is going to write a, write, write a lot of fluff pieces for. And, uh, and in this case, it will improve your SEO. Yeah. And I think that gets to, back to the, the earlier point that we were saying about it's the specificity of this application of generative AI. This is not writing a college term paper that's, you know, six pages. This is two paragraphs around a specific topic. A tone can be applied. And there is always, of course, the ability to review this. This isn't like we're immediately taking things that have been generated by Gen AI and throwing it out on your website. You always have the ability to have that engineer review it to say, yes, this technically makes sense. And marketing can review it and say, yes, this beats what our kind of goals are, but it's taking the heavy lift of creating that content in the first place yeah. and streamlining that and making it, again, it's that specificity of the application of that tool that I think is really uh, important in that space. Because like you said, it's just a complex environment when it gets down to those kind of B2B catalogs. Absolutely. Excellent. Gentlemen, this has been a really fun conversation. Uh, we are unfortunately at the end of our time. We ran a, even a few minutes over here, but we want to make sure that everyone uh, get some, can has the opportunity to learn more information. I'm going to go ahead and drop our beautiful faces off this screen here for a second so everyone can take a look at these QR codes that we have up here. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Hawk Search, break out your phone, scan that QR code. That'll take you to a place where you can go ahead and get more information about it. And of course, if you'd like to know more information about CSS Commerce and Rob there, uh, get all their wonderful tools, all their expert help, go ahead and scan that QR code. That'll also take you to there to get more information from them. I'm going to go ahead and pull our faces back in here so everyone can see us as we say goodbye. I want to say, Rob, thank you so much for joining. It was a pleasure to talk to you today. It was a pleasure getting all this put together. You've been, been nothing but a joy to work with. Really do appreciate the, the conversation. Look forward to even more times that we can talk uh, as we move forward. John, you know it's always good. You're my, my partner in crime when it comes to these webinars, so thank you again for joining me here. Uh, and for everyone else for joining us. Thanks, for Yeah, coming. thanks, Rob. We'll see you thank next you. time. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.